chapter 20 of The Catcher in the Rye, Holden remains at the Wicker Bar past midnight, getting really drunk. He decides to call Jane, but changes his mind and calls Sally to talk about trimming the Christmas tree together. Sally tells him to go to bed, and Holden feels crazy for having called her in the first place. He staggers to the men's room, douses his head with cold water, and sits on a radiator. The pianist comes in and notices Holden's age and tells him to go home. Holden goes to the hat room crying because he feels so lonely and depressed, and once again, he's been ostracized for his age. The hat check girl, too, urges him to go home, making him put on his red hat over his wet hair. Holden walks to Central Park to see the ducks. Then he drops Phoebe's record and it shatters. Holden picks up the shards, stuffing them into his coat pockets. He finally finds the slushy pond and hunts around in it for nesting ducks, nearly falling in. Holden sits on a bench and fantasizes about dying from pneumonia and the cold, and he imagines people at his funeral, the aunts and cousins who came to his brother Allie's funeral. Holden's two nights in New York have been somewhat hellish for him, and while he's tried to have a coming-of-age adventure, it's really ended up being kind of a nightmare of alienation. He thinks about how all he's wanted to do was stay away from his parents, but in fact, everything that's happened has gone wrong. The tourists from Seattle stuck him with the check. He was shamed and robbed by a prostitute. He was threatened and hit by her pimp. He was treated disrespectfully by waiters, cab drivers, bartenders, friends and strangers alike, who all told him to go home. He was insulted as immature by an older student he trusted, and we know Holden takes his maturity seriously. But the strangers Holden encounters often react in caring, if ineffective, ways. Mrs. Morrow had chosen not to be offended by his flirtations and mothered him. The nuns had called him a sweet boy and conversed with him genuinely. Carl Luce agreed to meet him and talk. The pianist and hat check girl had checked on his condition and told him to go home. Holden feels terribly alone and disconnected, but actively rejects connection because people are phony. He does, in fact, meet people who show him genuine human concern. But his adventure has seen him end up just as lonely as he was when he left school in the first place. Consider the metaphor of the ducks, going somewhere, traveling, but in a group. The reality of the situation? Nothing's in that park. It's just Holden, like it always has been through most of the book.